Well, after a uh, long and wet, soggy weekend up north, we are back down south trying to locate some birds for this week. And uh, so far, first place struck out. So we're basically doing process of elimination. We're going to rule this place out and then take on a hunt at a uh, different place that birds don't usually roost, but they come through a little bit later. So uh, that's what we're going to do. It is cold, very cold. You can probably see my breath. I think it's like 35 degrees right now. So it's uh, not exactly fun turkey hunting weather. Well, we still can't locate a bird down south. We've gone uh, since the Sunday before last. It was the last time we heard a bird. Well, Phil Hooter gobbled today, and it was about a mile away, and we couldn't figure out where it came from, so we just went into the woods and tried to set up and call. And didn't see anything, so <clears throat> we're pretty discouraged at this point. Well, right after recording that, we walk out to a tom literally right on the field and we're gonna have to crawl to get in position on this bird and try to cut them off from where they're going well we tried to sneak around in front of them set up where they were headed called to them that didn't work so now I'm going to try to sneak back to the edge of this field and see where they went. He's right here, strutting. We got to go around this way and get around him. Well, that bird is either really smart or really lucky because he wasn't that far away from us. We were kind of in the direction he wanted to go and we didn't get him. Disappeared. Gobble that like, that had to be no more than 50 yards. Yeah, did you get that gobble on camera? Yeah. Damn, where the hell did he go? He's coming straight out in the field. See, he might come right across. We might want to set up. Well, once he goes in behind the pines, if he doesn't come, we can swing in front of him. So if if he, all right, here's the thought. If he goes in the pines, great, we'll get out in front of him. If he's not, can we get back over there and call him this way? We should be able to. We can set up over there. So let's kind of where we were last, the other morning. Well, we're doing an afternoon hunt right after work. We literally just got here and we spotted a tom coming into a field. So we're going to try to sneak over and get set up on him cut them off. There's a tom in the hen. Well, of course, it almost worked out perfectly. As soon as she came up over top of the hill, managed to pick us off somehow. So, now we gotta try and circle around and get in front of them. Well, we're booking it. A tom saw us, hen saw us. We tried to get in front of them. Saw him cutting across the field. So now we're trying to circle and get way ahead of them. But he's got some pace, so we're moving fast. All right, so we just busted it to get down ahead of this bird. And we got a bridge right here that they come, we're thinking he'll come across. So we're basically just set up on the other side of it, hoping that he comes. Well, we'll chalk that up to the Tom winning one. We chased him all over tonight. Got him in a gun range. Didn't have my gun because he was on somebody else's property. I had walked right up to the property line to check to see what direction he was going so we knew how to set up. The hen came in literally three yards from us, walked right by us. Tom came in, followed suit, got to within 10 yards, saw us, we never moved. He started putting and moved off. So 
<sighs> it's unfortunate, but that's how it goes. Out here with John today, we had a uh, bummer of a hunt first thing because we busted the bird we were after off the roost, and then after that we decided to check another spot and there was a bird gobbling his head off. We called to him for a little bit, thought he was hung up, swung around to the other side of him because there was water that we didn't think he'd cross. Get over to the other side, hear him gobbling right back where we came from. So we pretty much uh, made all the wrong moves today, but that's how it goes sometimes. Good Lord. That is just insane. picked it up and wandered back over towards me. And I was coming out of the blind and I saw it and I went, ah, uh, those are huge. Like seriously, huge. All right, we were just sitting here and uh, I heard something crack to the left and looked and this coyote came out behind one of those big trees and it just trotted right up to about 15 yards and quick draw to the left and, and put it down. Sure enough, we get out here, there's a big old Tom strutting around, same spot where he, uh, just shot that monster bird on Friday, so uh, we might be going out here and trying to get a twofer out of this field tomorrow. You're not going to putt on me. Don't you start putting on me. Smoked him. No shortage of stuff that you gotta carry into the woods when you're turkey hunting, especially when you're recording hunts. When you're carrying all that stuff and there's a turkey back there, it makes it all worth it. Now how are your shoulders? Like normal, sore, why? Just make sure. Mine's getting a little sore. So enough to carry my 80-pound chair that I love so much, I'd be alright. Yeah takes up like three quarters of the space in the blind, but you didn't get a sore butt. That's how it's supposed to work. Uncle Jim spots a bird in the field one night, watch it roost, go out there and kill it the very next morning. First thing in the morning comes out. Loved our Avion X decoy. I didn't want to say it when Phil and Uncle Jim were around, but that's how you actually shoot a bird the first time. Phil has a bird goblin. I just shot my bird coming to meet up with him to try to help him kill this bird. He said it's been gobbling its head off non-stop. He's never heard a bird gobble so much. <laughs> 